Well, today we have something a little different, a slightly different camera angle to go with it. It'll be interesting to see how this works. But um, I uh, decided that uh, my late brother's been gone about four years now, almost, almost to the day, in fact. And uh, I inherited his uh, Lego Technic kit as a kid. I haven't really touched it in about ten years, so I thought it's got coming up on Christmas probably time I pulled it out of storage and it literally has been 10 years so I thought I'd go over the contents of this box with you guys and uh, for some reason there's a floppy drive lead in here, no that's an IDE lead so that can go and some of this stuff some vintage stuff that uh, may or may not be available these days so it'll be interesting so I thought I'd just go over the contents with you guys and Maybe I might make something as well. So this is a very old uh, power control box with a forward reverse switch, polarity switch. I'm not sure what the inside of this is going to look like. Judging by that rusted screw, I don't have good hopes. Let me see if I can find a screwdriver. My good old Stanley kit. I usually buy a set of these whenever they're on special. I'm never without a screwdriver. Now, let's see here, someone like this should be about the right size. Let's have a look here and we'll see what we can get. It's a very, very rusted screw. Let's have a good look here. And there's a rattly sound in here. I'm hoping that is not going to be corroded terminals falling loose, but Let's see, well, most certainly there's been some corrosion in here, so that is probably going to be a restoration job. I'm not going to try and use that right now, I'm just having a preliminary look, see what we can do. So now this I remember from my childhood, this is a motor driven unit and both of these drives are geared together, um, and if I recall correctly, these can pop out and there are multiple drive controls. So this is where you would stick one of the normal X-shaped shafts through here. Um, if there's one kicking around in here. So yes, and there we go. It does actually, they are geared alike if I can turn this around. So we can see. But I think there might be a worm drive involved in this too because they're not turning freely. And uh, some of the very old connector styles that you're probably not used to seeing with these. Um, so that one has been around as long as I can remember. Um, and I can remember back to being about five or seven years of age. So that makes it getting on to almost 30 years now. Maybe 29, 28. But it was uh, probably a few years old then. So um, I'll retrieve my screwdriver. And a battery cover here, that's interesting. There's a slightly later model battery case, which again has a slight bit of corrosion, but not too bad. Designed to take a 9 volt battery this time, unlike the C cells of the previous one. What else do we have here? This is an interesting little modification. This has got my brother written all over it. So it looks like there's been a power input. This looks like a heatsink. I'm betting I'm going to find a 78 or a 9 regulator in here. Or a 79 or a 9 if it's the negative version. You might have stripped it out of a power supply. And computer power supplies use the negative rail regulators. This feels like it may have been glued in as well. I don't like using screwdrivers on these, but this one is a little stiff. What have we got here? Well, this well could have been a modification that I did. This will be interesting. We have here, yes, that's definitely a regulator. It's a 79 series package. Or no, 78 series. Let's see if we can see on the camera under the light here. Now, I might have to look myself. Let me find an external light source here. This one should do the job. All right, let's see. It is an LM. 7809C so that's a 9 volt regulator usually good up to about 28 volts input so that's 
very nice to see that in there, but some of you guys are probably screaming at your screen that it's sacrilege and that you've destroyed a classic. Well, it may have been me, it may have been my brother, I really don't know after this many years. And apparently it was a challenge to fit that back on here. So, let's reassemble this. But, um, I have my brother's children, um, coming around to visit over Christmas, so I figured it might be about time we brought out his old Lego collection. His, uh, son is actually particularly interested in this, so we'll see how we go. Now, there's a good long length of cable on here. This looks like figure eight speaker cable. But it's grey in keeping with the theme, I guess. And what have we got on the end here? On the end of that we have a small 12 volt 200 milliamp plug pack. Well, we can probably increase the current on that later. We have a piece of some Cat5 wired into this, obviously to make a, uh, a bus bar. And we have some of the more modern connectors. They're interesting. Been some power systems in here. Well, at least that lead is is largely original. That's nice. Oh, we have the monorail stand now. That. I believe probably came from a mate of mine who has a monorail set and we accidentally traded pieces quite a bit. Oh, now this I remember. We've got pneumatics and a little pneumatic valve. Let's see if this still functions. Oh, it does. Hello. Probably use a little bit of um, a little bit of lubrication there, but oh, and I have the reservoir tank for it as well. What else do we have here? Oh, I've got another pneumatic. This one's looking a little worse for wear, but it's still moving. That's nice. What else do we have? We have some of these jumbo tyres all put together for safety, obviously. And I think that they have something to do with this. So I think at some time we had a uh, bulldozer kit or something. Now I've seen a very special bit of gear here. These are my favourites. These are the differential housings. Um, I should have some spider gears to go with them somewhere. I'm going to set that aside and have a look later. Oh, what have we got here? Some of the older style motors. There's two of them latched together. These are nice. These take the power strip underneath. So this is interesting. These were these were new style when I was used to them. I grew up with that little black thing and not knowing that these existed until late in the piece. And what's this? This is either an AGP or a PCI Express clamp. I think AGP, given how long this has been in storage. Been in, there you go, a whole socket type has developed in the time that this has been in storage. Here's some propellers, two-part propellers. Many fun has been had with those. Um, we've got another pneumatic. Oh, that's a Ah, uh, that's a pneumatic ram that's lost its spring, or maybe it was removed while trying to fit it to a cam action. Um, luckily though, that might get some restoration as I happen to have a full box of assorted springs that could potentially replace that. That'd be interesting. So, on to the next stuff. What have we got here? We've got suspension springs. These guys, there I have some wheel centers from those. These are genuine Legos. Those I have had since primary school. And somewhere in here there's a wheel centre as well. And my apprentice has heard the jingle of Lego, even though we should be in bed. Now, what do we've got here? Now, you can't take those. They need fixing. <laughs> ah, the lure of Lego. You can't avoid it. So I've got some different styles of wheels here, all of which have come from different kits. These are some of the very old versions, these. <laughs> that is the sign of my little Maltese Terrier Cross Chihuahua so named funny. Patch from many years ago. And these are blocks that can be configured differently with free spinning grips in them. They're probably some vintage stuff as well. We have some cylinder blocks which I think are still produced today. Um, there's another pneumatic ram. What have we got? Ah, an intact battery box but it feels like it's full of batteries. This might not be good inside. <laughs> I have some help at the moment, as you can hear. Battery box. 
Yes, they're all battery boxes over there. Alright, let's see. I'm trying to get this open. It feels like the batteries may have swollen and jammed their way in there, so I'm not holding out a lot of hope for this. And that was nearly my toes. I have to get that from under the bench now. This one, yeah. This one, <laughs> I've started something. The next generation is going to be into this. Let's see if we can get this open. Wow, this is in tight. And the latch is indeed. The latch has been disengaged. These look like they might have been rechargeables. But the latch is through, despite the sound that wasn't broken. <laughs> oh. oh, this is not feeling very good, I have to admit. Ah. I see what's going on here. I'm going to have to open that later because I think this is jammed from a battery bulging. So let me see here. There's something definitely very wrong in this car. So that is a project for another date. Let's continue looking through here. What else do we have? Ah, the sound of childhood. Oh, the intersection, intersection for a motorbike. And this is probably one of the oldest pieces in here that I recognise. It's a little windscreen. Don't recall what this is actually from. What else do we have? Oh, oh, a no frills AA battery. <laughs> from Franklin's supermarkets. Well, that has been around a year or two. Okay. Oh, well, here's a NICAD battery pack. One amp hour. I have a sense that somebody might not want to go to bed soon. Well, here's a rack and pinion steering column. The rack, I presume, is somewhere in here. Little extendable crane arms. Ah, moon wheels. I used to have moon plates, which I'm not sure where they are now, but they were for the moon rover vehicles. Little jet engine pods. And the uh, epitome of my childhood is busted gears, making major reduction gearboxes for all sorts of nefarious purposes. I have thumb and spur gears. Um, I have a rack, which I believe might have been part of that rack and pinion I saw just before. There it is. So that, I believe... No, there is a different one. I think there's a round version. There's small suspension units. There's lots of cylinders around here. There's more miniature wheels. Let's have a dig. Oh, there's another Franklin's battery. <laughs> They're antiques on their own. Um, we have a steering wheel. What else have we got? I think this is dragged on well enough. I think this is dragged on well enough now. Uh, so I think I'll uh, call this video quits, and then I'll come back when I've got some more useful and interesting things to do with this. So just in addition to this video, I did actually get this battery pack open eventually, and we have Power One alkaline cells from made by made by Varta which are a good brand of cells, I can tell you. But I thought I might just pull these out and we'll see what state they're in. So this one is not looking good, but it's also not looking as bad as it could have been, given that the length of time it's probably been in there. I know you guys are all probably screaming down the thing. You shouldn't think, leave things packed away with batteries in them. Well, that's good, but I suspect about the time when I packed this away, I was under some kind of duress and move in a rather large amount of haste. I don't recall exactly when, but I suspect that was the case at the time. Most of these have lived up to the Varta name and they haven't really leaked. There's a little bit of corrosion on the terminals, but really nothing that warrants the probably 10 years that they've been in there. But they were probably fairly close to fully charged when they went in. So let's check with the multimeter and see what kind of voltage we get. And I need some new leads. I made these up 
at a short notice. So let's find a bit of that now. Volts, volts, volts. 20 volt range. I don't expect to see anything at all out of these. Uh, let's do this here. See what we get here. Oh, 1.3 volts. That is pretty shocking. <laughs> Almost literally. Let's see what we've got. 1.5 volts. That's new battery voltage. That is that is quite shocking. You know what? I wonder if they can supply us in current. If they're actually that good, this little JCAR of Apex battery tester might actually give us a light. Oh, they're a little bulged, so they're not fitting into the battery tester quite properly, but let's see. Oh, hey, how's that? Ten-year-old battery. And we've got a bit of light out of it. That is, that is amazing. Anyway, that's it for the bonus content. <laughs> that and the Franklin's batteries. <laughs> All right. So I managed to construct a little something, and we'll see how we go here. Give you a bit of a demonstration. So I did actually ditch that little power pack. It wasn't working very well, and I've hooked into my house battery here with these two banana plugs that go over to two clips, supplying about 12.4 volts. And that's running into this pack with the regulator. And this uh, connector is a little damaged, but it seems to be working relatively okay for the time being. Um, I used some of the already modified strips. I probably need to go and buy a few more Lego bits and pieces. And uh, we can see the gear drive here, which drives the pump that I found without a spring, feeding air into the air tank and off to the pneumatic valve. And we have a ram there and a long arm just, I don't know, for the fun of it. So we can see here if we drive in either direction, we get uh, some air pressure, so we should be able to drive this upwards and downwards. Nothing too fancy, but it does provide enough air to do the job. Now we've run out of air, so and so coming down should be relatively easy. We should be able to do that gently and going up. If I use the air sparingly, I might get a few cycles out of this. Not quite, so let's about as far as I'm going to get with air. Let's try this. We'll sit it at the bottom. Whoop, we've got a bit of an air pressure leak there. And we've got... And that's about it. So if we let a little bit of air out, we'll see if we can get her up. It's good pressure. Anyway, so, something interesting. And my apprentice has spotted me. My apprentice that should be in bed. again. All right, we have to try again for the apprentice. She wants to see it. Right. Here you go, you do that. There you go. And push it down again. <laughs> That's fun. You, you operate that and I'll run this. It's good having three hands. <laughs> anyway, this has been fun. <laughs> We're going to play a bit more. See you all later.